Does a major acquisition mean a rapid pivot to newfound riches? This chip-making giant is making plays. Are new opportunities an exciting antidote to industry headaches? Throughout the tech meltdown over the past six months, you know what's held up better than most? Broadcom Semiconductor Company focused on networking equipment and the data center with a hardware and, more importantly, a software kicker. This thing's only down 15% from its late December highs, in part because the stock is so darn cheap, selling for 15 times earnings, and it's got almost 3% yield. But it's also because Broadcom's doing just fine. Two weeks ago, the company reported a strong set of numbers with encouraging guidance for the current quarter. At the same time, perhaps much more important, we learned they're shelling out $61 billion in cash and stock to buy VMware, one of our favorites, a major cloud infrastructure play, accelerating Broadcom's diversification away from traditional semiconductors. And if that wasn't enough, they announced a massive $10 billion buyback on top of the $3 billion repurchase plan that was already in place. In response... The stock jumped nearly 10% over the next two days, although it's given back a little bit since then. But this is exactly the kind of stock. This is the stock I want you to be thinking about. Earlier today, we got a chance to speak with Hock Tan, the brilliant president and CEO of Broadcom, right after the purchase of VMware. Take a look. Hock, congratulations. This deal, I think, is the capstone. Tell us about what will make your business 50% software because that's so exciting to so many of us who appreciate the growth that you've always had. Right. And we think it's a great asset and it's a great acquisition for us because, uh, you know, it's very incredibly aligned with our strategy of building the, uh, the, the leading provider of infrastructure technolog technology globally. And this acquisition has all the attributes we seek. You know, they are the leader in mm -hmm. a big and glo growing global markets, blue chip customers, and they have incredible talent of engineers, very innovation centric culture, which is exactly what Broadcom is all about. Now, do you think there's enough uh, overlap with VMware and your current Broadcom uh, salespeople that you'll be able to make it so that the channel you'll be able to offer both hardware and software. Can that work? It's largely software, largely software, because our hardware tends to be sold through systems in the greater okay. OEMs. But software, absolutely, combined with Broadcom right. existing software portfolio, will create a uniquely powerful value proposition to our enterprise customers, one that will enable them to effectively run, uh, develop, run, manage their applications seamlessly, securely uh, across from on-prem, private right. cloud to multi-cloud. And Huck, I think a lot of people don't know, your core business is one that is excellent uh, throughout. It's always been excellent. And you have customers you, that people don't realize you have. For instance, you talked about Meta, the old Facebook, it would be a billion dollar customer. Your customer list are all the big companies and they seem to love what you do for them. Absolutely, we sell on technology. We create the best leading edge technology out there that enables what is the strong uh, underlying fundamental trend going on today, which mm -hmm. is every enterprise out there needs to expand create and expand a digital footprint in order to be more efficient, productive, addressing what is needed. And we are the enablers of making that happen. Now, one of the things I've been saying on Mad Money is we're looking for companies that make things and do stuff that reward shareholders and have a reasonably priced stock. Hawk, I've got to tell you, in the same breath of buying VMware, you immediately talked about what you were going to do for existing shareholders. Why can't others out here see what you do in terms of your realization that the shareholders own the company? Well, you know, we never lose sight of this focus. One is that we're there for customers. We're there to make sure our employees have great opportunities and succeed. But equally, we're there to deliver consistent, compelling value to our shareholders. They are, part of the, they are a big part of the reason we exist. And you immediately talked about buyback. That dividend is a very positive uh, division of cash flow. 
people again out here. Hawk, they don't think like that. Why do you recognize that to build that stable, stable group of shareholders allows you to do these great deals and then you do them accretively? It's not a waste of their money. Absolutely not. In fact, the way we think about why we issue dividends, even as we keep on a strategy of acquiring great assets, is simply that we feel, while we like our shareholders to think of us as a long-term investment, as a long-term play, we feel that we are rewarding them as we progress, as we advance, which is why we save we put aside half our free cash right. flow as a return of dividends, and the other half in return, they let us keep to do the next deal and yes. grow the business. All right, well, my colleague David Faber said, I, you must ask Hawk if he's out of deals. Now he's being, buying companies as big as VMware. Is there anyone left? Oh, I'm sure there will be, but I'm focused one deal at a time, and this is it. VMware. Okay, so uh, I'm not hearing anything about inflation, about the pace of economy, about concerns you might have, about what the Fed is going to do. That's never been your style. You just don't seem to focus on that at all. Well, no, because I think we are fairly unique in the way we focus on a business. To start off with, I have a great advantage. I have a strong tail with my business and the business model, which is about technology spending, technology needed to create digital transformation. I know you heard that a lot of times. Sure we really have. Every enterprise needs in these days to modernize themselves and create a digital footprint. And Broadcom, with 22 different franchises out there, key franchises in technology, enables that to happen. In fact, Jim, I got to tell you, in 99.5% of every bit of data that flows in the internet will cross at least one or more Broadcom chip. And what's incredible is when I look at your complete mosaic, every one of them is doing well. It's almost as if you don't tolerate divisions that don't perform. Frankly, I don't. <laughs> I don't. These are the key criteria is sustainability. Right. To qualify as a division on a Broadcom platform, you have to stand alone and you have to sustain your business, your mission for the next 10 years at least. Well, I want to urge people who want dividend income, consistency and a very inexpensive stock that Hawk Tan has delivered and delivered and delivered for Broadcom. Thank you so much, Hawk. It is absolutely great to see you. Jim, my pleasure. Thank you. We have money to be back here.